All right, straight up, 6 o'clock, you got the hammer uh, on the radio here in Toronto. Multi-platinum, platinum actually, Grammy award-winning artist, DJ, producer. Please welcome to the Z1035 Studios, Zed, everybody. Hello. Yay. Zed on Z this afternoon. Zed on Z. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, I think it should be Zed on Zed. <laughs> it should be Zed on Zed, but we figure Z rhymes with three. And, okay. uh, and people ask is us. Is that well, the reason? The, well, that's one of them, I think. The other okay. one is, is because we're unique. I like I like that. And, and people ask us, why did you do that? Why did why did you call it Z yeah. instead of Z? So if they ask about it, then uh, they're at least was, talking about that's it. That's what I ask. Yeah. I mean, you know, when you're in America, and I'm, my name is Zed because my last name starts with a Z. A Z, right? With a Z. Yeah. Okay. And when I tell people that in America, they don't get it. No. Now we're here in Canada, <laughs> and we are not at Z1035. That doesn't even. No, we're at Z1035. Does it sound better though? Check it. Z- Z1035. Yes, sounds perfect. Z1035. <laughs> sounds a little bit better. Uh, coming off Digital Dreams last night, how was that? It was incredible. I loved it. A um, lot of people in the room said you ripped it last night. Like, they, yeah, they were all loving it, man. I think they're all you. tired from watching. It was amazing. You last night. Uh, I yeah. got a little bit extra pyro because uh, a couple guys couldn't play because of the weather the day before. That's true. So I think people were really stoked to to hear some music. Finally. Awesome. It was like a fireworks show mixed with Zed. That's exactly what it was. <laughs> mixed with Z. What do you th- what do you think of uh, the Toronto crowd compared to everywhere else around the world? It's really great. I've, I've actually played Toronto a lot. I've played the Mod Club a couple times, I think twice. I've played Sound Academy. I played um, the Veld Festival. Right. I played Digital Dreams last night. I played an after party. I have no clue where I played. <laughs> someone, really? Was someone there? Anybody was at the after party? Tattoo. Tattoo. There you go. Uh huh. You got uh, any of those or no? Tattoos? I have no tattoos. No. no. Awesome. No, I like the puns here. We're, we're in a row. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, let's take everybody back. Age of four, I guess you were on the piano, right? That's where it all started for you, more or less. Your parents uh, sort of pushed you to get on the, an instrument and try to play something. Forced me. Forced, Forced me you. into okay. playing the piano. Um, it was fun at first, and then um, my parents were my teachers, and then they said, you got to go to this chick here. She's going to be your new teacher. And I hated that. Right. Because um, I actually had to really do something. I've, I've always been kind of lazy. Uh-huh. And then uh, I was 12 years old and I decided I wanted to do something my parents absolutely don't want me to do. So I started <laughs> playing drums in a metal band. Oh, nice. And done that for quite a while. And then the, la- the last experiment was to make electronic music. Oh, really? And this, so you went from a metal band to electronic music, you sort of tried it out one day and you're just like... Just for fun. It was never meant to be my, my thing. I just, I didn't even like electronic music. I just liked making it. Uh-huh. So, and then I got into it and my friends were like, this is really good. You should keep doing this. I was like, all right. And all right, I'll keep doing it. And your parents were cool with it when you were trying different things like that? Or were they yeah, like... Yeah, my parents have always been super supportive. Um, even when I was in school and they almost kicked me out because I was on tour and... Uh, They've always been, they've always had my back. Awesome. Uh, explain the whole Lady Gaga thing, how that came about. The whole Lady Gaga came about, well, actually, yeah. She actually can, hit you up, correct? She did. Well, I, m- I met her at a show I played in London, uh-huh. um, and we had like a minute to talk, and she said, let's make some music together, because at that point, I had made some remixes for her. Right. So I, I showed her Addicted to Memory, the first song on my album, mm-hmm. three and a half years ago. Right. At least the beginning of it, and she loved it, and she called me, and I didn't pick up. Because I played a show. <laughs> oh, I thought you were just like, nah, I'm not gonna no, take a call from no, Lady Gaga. Course, I, if it was Madonna, that was maybe. My dream, but, <laughs> yeah, of um, course. I played a show and then I found out who that call was, and um, then she said she wants me to produce her record and go on tour with her. Why? Do you think that was sort of the next step for you? Like, you know, that was a big step. I yeah. mean, that was a big dream of mine to one day make a song for her, not just a remix. And then um, obviously a lot of people paid attention. I got to play in front of stadiums in Asia. Mm-hmm. Um, it really started my career over there in Asia. What's your favorite Zed song? Oh man, that's a hard one. I don't know if I have a favorite Zed song. Um, I think one of the ones I'm very proud of is Spectrum. Always right. Will be. And why is that? Uh, why is that? Because I think it's a chord progression that no one else has ever made in music. At least I've never in my life heard a song that has the same chord progression. It's right. so long. I it takes get it. so long to turn around. Does it? It takes you a while to make music. I, I was watching yeah, an interview. Slow. You said it takes you a while to do it. Yeah. How long does it take to make a song? Uh, it can take a week. It can take five months. Yeah. It can take three and a half years. And <laughs> if you talk about Addicted to Memory, that one was a really long one. Right. What new songs uh, do you like now from maybe other DJs? Not yourself. Um, what do you think's popping? Anything's popping. Good question. I found this guy, Aylan, I think is his name. Okay. He's had some really cool songs. Um... Uh, Kevin Drew or K Drew is super super talented. Has amazing music coming out. Uh, who else is good? I like Galantis. Mm-hmm. Got into Galantis. Um, 
Wibek is a really talented producer. A lot of good stuff out there. So do you, you play a whole bunch of uh, other people's songs when you play your sets, or you yeah. just pick and choose? Yeah, I do. I mean, I'm always telling myself, you know, I should play more of my own music, but you know, after you play it a million times, you kind of just want to hear something new. Right, I get um, it. But it's a good mix. It's a, it's about 50-50. Awesome. About do you like to play in the big room, like the, the big festival or a smaller room? What, what, what do you like I better? like the bigger rooms. I like, for sure like Like a festival, crowds. like I last I think there's night. something about the unity of 20,000 people singing together. Mm -hmm. uh, jumping together, knowing that you know the person might be on the other side of this festival, but they're still hearing the same thing, feeling the same thing, seeing the same thing here. I think I think there's something about a big crowd. You know, sometimes like last night I played a tattoo, which is super small mm -hmm. um, for fun, but uh, I would usually prefer the larger crowd. Awesome. Okay, so let's talk about the new album, True Colors. It's out now. The lead single is called uh, True Colors as well. Why True Colors? True Colors because of a few reasons. A, the meaning of True Colors is to show somebody who you really are, to show uh -huh. somebody your true colors. And this is what I've done with my album. I, I wanted everyone to know that I want you to know that well, I have I a lot of sides okay. musically. You know, there's the acoustic side. I work with a rapper, I work with a rock band. Um, I just wanted everyone to see every side of me. Every every song has its own color. That's right. So every song is different from what you say. Yeah, well, exactly. Color is, is a different word in this case for like a, an emotion you get when you hear a song. Uh -huh. There was uh, there were two songs on the record that sounded similar. Right. So I had to kick it off because I wanted it to be concept album. And I wanted it to go all the way through, and I wrote a new song which is called Paper Cut. That was the last thing I wrote. Awesome. Love the new single, by the way. Beautiful now. Beautiful now. Thank you and, very much. And why beautiful now? You found we're a beautiful all woman. Beautiful now. <laughs> we're You're all beautiful. beautiful now. You all are beautiful now. Right. Everybody is that where it now. came from? Especially sort of? the, yeah. Well, it's 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 just the summer song, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, whenever I hear the song, even if it's rainy outside, like yesterday, it feels like the sun is shining. So I thought um, that's a good reason for it to be the single. Yeah, it's sort of a song that makes everybody feel good and get yeah, a good mood. Yeah, people really all, always smile and they move, and uh, I love playing that song live. I just love that song. Awesome. <laughs> now, a male vocal on that. Usually, you're, you're you're with female vocals. Why why the male all of a sudden? Or you just sort of thought that song was <laughs> changing favorite. everything up. Man. Yeah, yeah, you're just like getting old. Next year, be in the studio with Diddy or something. <laughs> um, I don't know. Usually, when I write a song, I immediately know whether I want to have a girl or a guy sing it. Mm -hmm. And I tend to like female vocals a lot. But I have you know, Spectrum was with a guy, Lost at Seas with a guy, right. Paper Cut. I've got a couple songs with guys. I guess it's 50-50 almost. Not really. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. More female. It's but uh, I, I understand that you did a whole bunch of crazy things with your fans over the last little while. By the way, we are playing your song. We love it. It's on the hit list, which is the countdown here at 6 o'clock. So uh, we've, we've supported you for a long time. Thank and we love your music here at Z1035. But uh, The Beautiful Now is reacting really well on the radio station. Awesome. So. Thank you so much. If you're just tuning in, it's Hammer talking to uh, Zed. Um, so tell us about what you did to connect with your fans. I was hearing something with the Grand Canyon and Empire yeah. State Building. Explain. Well, um, it started with a small idea. I said, hey, I want to... I want my fans to hear my new album first, and I want them to hear it in a way that you know matches the color of the song, and in a way they will never forget it. So, first idea was like, hey, let's rent out a room and put rugs in and make it red or make it blue, and then we went way further and it's like, hey, how about we rent the entire Empire State Building and do it in there and color it, and then I flew, I rented eight helicopters and and flew everybody to the Grand Canyon to wow. a place you can get to unless you take a helicopter. Right. And we listened to one of the songs, uh, and then I rented Alcatraz, the Stanley Hotel, went to the desert, uh, a cave that we lit up in colors. So we really thought of the most unique places you could find in America mm -hmm. and uh, give my fans something back. Now, you just sort of picked the best fans for that? or how did you I did. Basically, what we did is we um, did a little scavenger hunt. Okay. Uh, we announced a little countdown, two days, and then uh, we would post a map or like a little a piece of a map and um, the first 50 fans to find all five Z logos and take selfies with them would get a ticket in and they don't know how long or where they're going something well when we rented the Stanley Hotel we actually everybody had a room and they stayed overnight and nobody knew when they would come back wow if they would come back and that sort of thing couldn't happen in Toronto or is that just another <sighs> time next album next album Next I like album. that. I like yeah. that. It's it's tough because obviously when people saw what we're doing in those events, were like some of the best events for me too. It was oh yeah, incredible. They they were like, why don't you come to Europe? Why don't you come to Asia? The truth is, because I was finishing my record, and right. I, sometimes I would play them a song that's that was unmastered mm -hmm. or had a vocal where I wasn't even sure if it's gonna stay or not. Right. Um, 
that was kind of the idea to get fans an exclusive look, but um, it had to be convenient and somewhat close because I had to finish my record. Right. <laughs> so I couldn't fly to Asia and Europe. Which is more important than anything. Maybe I should have been in Toronto. Uh, the production uh, on your tour is pretty amazing. Have you done something bigger than before? Uh, well, the, the, on this next tour, the production's actually going to be... The next tour, yeah. Right. It's going to be the best production ever. So um, some separate than last night. It'll be totally different than that. Uh, yes, it will be totally different than that. Right. Well, um, what's happening? Well, I can't say too much. I have oh. um, my visuals have always been a big part of my show. Um, we always create custom visuals and a custom look for every single song. And I got literally the best visual artist on the planet to design my entire tour. Um, and it's you will feel like you're in a different world every single time I change my song. So that sounds it's, amazing. It's incredible. Yeah. I want to see it now. All right, um, what do you think is next for the dance music scene? Uh, my album. Yeah, of everybody. course, of course. It is <laughs> um, in stores now, by the way. <laughs> What's next for dance music? I think, you know, there's this, let's call it main stage music. For anyone that knows what I mean with that, it's something very simple, distorted kick, and the same synth sound everywhere. I think people are going to get a little bit sick of that and will want to hear a little bit more music. Right, like so, instruments. Yes. So uh -huh. I hope that dance music is going to become a little bit more musical. Maybe some more focus on chords, chord progressions, song structures. Right. But there's amazing producers out there. I think it's just, you know, everything takes a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. Is there any DJs out there that you look up to that you're like... Oh, yeah, a lot guy. of... I mean, I think as a DJ, Tiesto is one of the best DJs. Um, he can play a different set every night. I could never do that. I okay. need to prepare as much as possible. Um, <laughs> right. I don't like to get in there and not be prepared. Um, I mean, I've, I've been a huge... or I'm still a huge fan of Skrillex. He's been a huge inspiration. Dead Mouse. He's, he's you went on a coffee run with him, I think, didn't you? I did. Last? I did. I went on tour with him as well. Uh huh. I had basically a coffee run every day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, did, I did go on a Ferrari coffee run, and I'm just happy I'm still sitting here. Yeah, I guess. I, was, I thought I was going to die for sure. Really? He drives like yeah. a maniac, right? He does. <laughs> don't you have speed limits here? Yeah, we do. You do. Yeah, well, well, he we're, doesn't. We're supposed to. He has no speed limits. You don't like the word, oh, you don't, maybe you don't like the word EDM, but you just like the M part, the music. And you were saying I that love before. love the M. Because the you were e talking about more of the instruments. very small, and then the M is very capital. Um, and you know, I, I consider myself EDM from the beginning because it's electronic and it's music and it makes people dance, so it makes sense. But it just kind of, there's a lot of good music, there's also a lot of bad EDM, a lot mm -hmm. of very bad EDM, <laughs> and a lot of terrible EDM. All right. And I think I mentioned one good and three, so three bad ones, so that's about the ratio. Um, and I just, when someone says EDM, I don't want them to think of me as like that, you know, simple. Not very musical dance music. So right, you're more of a musician than just a DJ. Music. I, I get it. I consider it, yeah. Um, you did, did you recently do a promo with Tinder? Somebody was telling I me. I did, that. yeah. It, what, what's incredible. that about? How did that work? <laughs> Are you well, on Tinder, by the way? Uh, well, I am since I have that uh, promotion with Tinder. Oh, and, really? And the and ladies he, are going to want to hit you up on Tinder here. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right, so go ahead. How did that all happen? With well, Tinder? basically, the cool thing about Tinder is that um, the whole idea behind Tinder is to tell people or match with people that you have the same interests with, that you like, you know, maybe the same music. So, since I know the people that like Zed, I match with them and uh, they can buy my album for half the price on Tinder if they match with me. Maybe they swipe left. In right. that case, they pay full price. Oh, really? Uh, and then. Uh, I'm gonna give away a couple of tickets for my tour, so I'm gonna hit up people in Tinder. You, you, and you. Awesome. You got a girlfriend? Uh huh. You're asking those private questions <laughs> again, huh? And he told me not to, too, but I'm like, whatever, I'm just gonna do I it. I know he did. You got a few he, girlfriends? He's <laughs> All right, we'll leave it at that. Um, okay, anyone have a question in the room or no? No, put him on no the questions. spot. Steve, you must have one. If you I don't wanna all... answer it, I'm just gonna drink the water. You must have one. You play his music all the time. Go ahead. <laughs> he said it. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Final question. If your life was a 10 chapter book, what chapter are we on? Uh, one. Really? Yeah. That, that's, that's a good answer, I think. Well, if we're on one, you're going to be huge. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations to the new albums Thank in stores so right much. now. Uh, everybody here wishes you a ton of success, and uh, hopefully you'll come back to Toronto one Thank day. Thank you so much. Soon. And you it. left us with this mix that we're going to drop right now. Yes. So we'll hit that. And uh, what can people expect from this? From the mix? Yeah. Best of times. Best of times. Makes sense. Zed, everybody, on yeah. Z1035. Everybody turn this up nice and loud. This will make your Monday.